Hello, Servers people. Welcome back to the Servers Challenge uh, video series. This is part of um, Servers Challenge provided by um, Complete Coding by uh, Sam Williams. If you want to join the, the challenge, you can uh, subscribe from his uh, Substack page. I'll leave the details in the description of this video. I think it's cool if you join because you learn, you know, lots of stuff and also you put yourself in charge of designing architecture of a uh, um, real world scenario. That's, that's pretty cool. But let's go back to the challenge. I received a second email with a few questions from Sam uh, based on the requirements of the of the challenge. Um, this is the architecture that I've designed. If you want to see all the details, you can check my previous video. And I'm going to link it. It should be uh, up here now. And uh, based on the architecture, I'm going to go through the uh, questions. I already answered to the questions, but I want to, you know, uh, discuss it over video. So all the uh, code and screenshots uh, are available in my GitHub repo, and I think will be available also on um, on the Sam Williams one. All right, let's go through the questions based on the... The first section is based on the AWS Well Architected document and is divided by section. So for the security one, how do you secure your data in transit? Data in transit in this case, based on my uh, architecture, is secure by applying HTTPS for each request. I'm enforcing HTTPS because I put the CloudFront uh, distribution uh, in front of the uh, client-side application. How do you secure your data at rest? Data at rest, in this case, is secured using encryption at rest in S3 and databases. In this case, I'm only using DynamoDB. Also, if we go in here, you know, we only using DynamoDB and S3. Uh, obviously, S3 has lots of different uh, encryptions to use. It can be uh, server-side encryption. It can even be like uh, KMS, so you provide your own key. And DynamoDB is encrypted by default. How is your architecture protected against malicious intent? So the idea here is that API access is controlled by JWT, which are handled by uh, AWS Cognito. So only, um, only authenticated users can uh, call API services, both from, from property owners and from visitors. And for storage, in this case, each function calling S3 or databases, in this case, Lambda functions calling DynamoDB or users calling S3, um, has only privilege to do that action they are designed for. So if uh, the Lambda function for creating a reservation can only create record on DynamoDB, it cannot delete records. So each Lambda function has its own uh, set of permission. And here I'm following the, you know, least privilege principle, which basically is given the least uh, privilege, um, uh, least, given the least privilege for each function, so you cannot do uh, more than it needs to do. So if it needs to create a reservation, it can only create records, it cannot update or delete. So let's go to the next section, which is like reliability. How would your infrastructure react if an availability zone went offline for one hour? Uh, in this case, uh, since API are powered by, you know, API Gateway and Lambda, um, they're already like deployed in multiple availability zones, so it shouldn't be a problem. And um, I only expect like maybe some uh, throttle requests, um, actually not throttle requests, but like some errors on the request, but then it will be um, kind of just the user retrying to for example, create or update the reservation. So I think, yeah, the application will still be usable and there should only be a temporary uh, loss of data, not loss of data, in terms of like some, I will expect only some errors on the API side, not uh, any uh, loss of data, uh, neither temporary or permanent. Uh, next question is like, how would you infrastructure react if a whole region went offline? In this case, since my uh, architecture is only deployed in, you know, a single region, is not um, replicated in different regions, I think the platform won't, wouldn't be usable. Uh, is it acceptable? Maybe I think it is acceptable for this kind of um, uh, platform. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, if a whole region went offline, uh, there's like a huge problem with AWS. So probably uh, my platform it's okay that it's not usable for this specific event.
obviously it depends on the requirements of uh, the customer at, at the end of the day. So how would your application react if you're dropping quiz uh, 10 pair in five minutes? Okay, so based on uh, the API design that I did, so with, you know, API Gateway and Lambda, the Lambda function should scale automatically based on the traffic. Obviously, this will take some time, and maybe five minutes is um, it's a lot of traffic increase in a very short time. So I would expect some requests to be throttled, but only temporary. And same thing for compute and database. Um, S3 shouldn't have any problem and database same thing it's um it can scale automatically you also you can also add like a, um a cache if needed like a, even like a scalable cache i think it's called dax for dynamodb also made a bit about it so you shouldn't hit any service limit uh, if a developer added a recursive bug to the so next question if a developer added a recursive bug to the code that caused memory user to spike how would your application handle it um, in this case, I think uh, I will only see uh, errors in, in my log system, CloudWatch. Uh, maybe I should like uh, configure alarms. I'm not like 100% sure how I can um, handle this. I need to study it a little bit more. Uh, what will happen if your database was corrupted or accidentally deleted? Uh, it's not a problem because a database is backed up like I think probably like hourly or daily, basically. Uh, let's go to the next section, which is performance. Uh, might anything in your application cause user requests to fail to meet latency requirements? I think it shouldn't be the case because it's, as I said, it's scalable. Cloudform is, is distributed using uh, edge location, so it shouldn't be a problem, to be honest. Um, how do you configure and optimize your compute resources? Uh, I'm using uh, Lambda. In this case, I think I'm going to start with default configs for Lambda, and then based on the usage, I can kind of, also based on the data, kind of uh, check which one are the, you know, the slowest Lambdas and configure the memory. I don't have a, like, uh, a strategy in mind, but I think I will uh, start like with default, and then based on the data, uh, trying to figure out how to optimize the, um, you know, the slow, the slowest functions. Uh, what should the team be monitoring to ensure optimal performance? I think like latency and errors. Uh, I know it's like a very general uh, answer, but uh, I don't have like, a real answer for this question, so I'm sorry. Uh, so let's go to the next question, uh, next section, uh, cost optimization. What is the rough cost to run this application? So based on the initial requirements, so, you know, five users, five owners between uh, 214 rental properties each. So let's say we have, let's say, 50 properties in total. Uh, API Gateway and Lambda should be, well, they are pay as you go, but um, they should, they should, we should, should stay in the free tier. In, if we don't have the free tier, it's like, you know, $5 per month. S3 and Cloudflare is like typically around $1, $3 per month. And on the B, uh, it's uh, again based on the requests. I would expect like ten dollars per month each. Uh, the, the most expensive, let's say. Um, what is the most expensive component of your application? I actually don't know, but I would expect that from CloudWatch logs. Unfortunately, I haven't had any uh, experience on these kind of applications, but uh, I think logs can grow very, very, can grow very, very quick, quickly. Uh, what design partners have you used? Uh, serverless with uh, event-based architecture. Uh, sustainability, I have no idea where it is, but uh, I need to study this on the, on the uh, well-architected document. So let's go on the um, project-specific questions. Mm, how accurate is your scheduling method? Um, if a visitor gets there but still hasn't been sent the uh, key lock code, then they'll be very annoyed. Yeah, in this case, I'm using uh, event bridge scheduler, so uh, the accuracy is around one minute. And I'm, showing you, I'm going to show you here on the architecture design. But basically, when uh, this scheduler runs daily, we can run it, you know, at midnight. So every midnight, every day, basically, it checks the check-ins for the day and send the door keys to the um, to the guest. So it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, what if uh, the email 
What if the email to the cleaning crew fails to send? Have you written the current code so no one can unlock the uh, key box? Yeah, so ideally here I said, so basically here is saying, what if uh, the cleaning crew um, doesn't receive the code, they cannot get into the uh, room, that's true. But ideally I said, the Lambda function that sends the email to the queue will override the code first and then send the email. If the email fails, I can kind of set up a retry method or tell the crew member to reach out to like a support email and then we will send them the correct code. I understand this is not like uh, an automatically failover. Uh, yeah, as I said, I'm probably gonna set up a study or retry method for the email, but I think for like the first iteration, getting like a manual support email should be uh, should be okay. So this is more interesting though, like the next question. If you use DynamoDB, what is your schema so that you can effectively query the bookings by property or by owner? Okay, for my design, the idea is to use the single table design. And uh, when you use the single table design, it's important to define the access pattern. So here I uh, created a list of the main ones. So get owner's profile, get owner's properties, get property details, get reservations details, get all reservations per property, get reservation by guest, get reservations by start and end date, and get reservation by ID. <clears throat> and here you can see a table with all the entities. For, so for the owner, the record uh, format, let's say, of DynamoDB is going to be owner email as a primary key and short key. And then here we can add all the, all the you know, attributes that are needed, like first name, last name, and blah, blah, blah. And to query the owner, you just need uh, the owner email and you set a uh, primary key and a uh, short key with uh, this format. All right, the next entity is very um, interesting, I will say, the reservation entity. Basically, I have the primary key with reservation ID and short key with reservation start date. And also, I'm going to create a global secondary index with primary key, which is uh, the, sec the short key of the main table and sort key, the primary key of the sort table. Basically, I'm inverting index. Why I'm doing this? Because in this way, I can access a single reservation ID as we want to do in here, get reservation details. So based on the, based on the reservation ID, I get the reservation um, details. But also, if you want to get reservation by start and end date, I can just query the secondary index by um, start date. And then I'm gonna get, uh, um, all the reservations based on that start date. Then the next one is uh, owner properties. Here is, um, um, oh yeah, get all the properties uh, for the owner. So based on the owner email, I have a primary key owner email and short key proper property ID. So if I only specify uh, owner email, I get uh, all the uh, properties by owner. Here is a simple one property. So specifying property ID, I get the properties attributes. And here, if I want to get all the reservations by property, I only need to specify property ID. And then I will get uh, all the reservations based on that property. And here is like just getting the uh, guest, property, uh, guest attributes. So I'm specifying guests uh, email and I'm gonna get uh, all the attributes. So I know it can be uh, a bit uh, complicated, but this should be able, uh, with this design, I should be able to handle all the uh, access partner. Uh, let's see the others' um, questions. Uh, what ongoing maintenance tasks are there to maintain this app? Uh, I think there shouldn't be any huge maintenance processes. Maybe, I mean, the, the backups are automated, so it shouldn't be a problem. How are you ensuring that one of the rental owners can access the properties and data of another owner? I'm using different user pools in Cognito to separate off, so it shouldn't be uh, the case. Uh, at the request to scale, the application might be over 3,000 bookings a year. And how do you uh, handle this? Uh, take note of limiting your email service provider and off platform. Uh, so as I said before, from the API and storage point of view, it shouldn't be a problem. It's fully scalable based on the load. Uh, email provider, again, 
uh, it's uh, from AWS, so it should be uh, adaptable as well. Uh, obviously, with email, I think you need to do some sort of like uh, warm up or something like that to be sure to not be um, in the spam folder. And for the auth provider, uh, again, it uh, pays the use and Kubernetes can scale as well. Uh, next question. So you are asked to add a feature when there is a cancellation or a booking slot that has not been booked. The owner wants a button to send an email to all people who have previously stayed there. Uh, this shouldn't be, how complicated it would be to extend your current architecture to handle this? Uh, this shouldn't be too complicated. Uh, I think that, you know, just uh, getting uh, previous guests based on an event, which is like, you know, a cancellation or booking, and then trigger something. It's something that the architecture is, is like event based should be uh, able to handle without, you know, changing too much stuff. Um, ho hotel chain hears about the application. They have 80 hotels, each with around 400 rooms. The hotel chains need more fine access control. They need new roles, chain manager, hotel manager, and hotel employees. How complicated will it be to extend your current architecture to handle this? Uh, I think I can create like a sort of access control list on Cognito. But I need to figure out how to do it also on the client side application and to be able, you know, to uh, efficiently uh, split within these different roles. So I think it will be a bit complicated. Oh, last questions. Are there any known limitations in your current architecture that could become an issue with increased scale? Oh, no, there shouldn't be because the application is fully scalable. So hopefully, finger crossed, uh, we are good with, uh, you know, increasing uh, scale. All right, that was all. Thanks for uh, watching the video. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. And again, if you want to uh, join this challenge, you're free to join on the uh, Code Complete uh, website. I think it's pretty cool. Actually, Complete Coding website, sorry. And um, let's do it.